Governor, Governor Carver was followed into office by, by Governor Charles Terry, who uh, died in February of 1971. But we will be seeing a, a slide show about his administration uh, at the end of this program. In the meantime, uh, following Governor Terry, we had Governor Russell Peterson, who's also with us today. Thank you, Ned, fellow governors and fellow Delawareans. Appreciate very much this opportunity today to meet here with my fellow governors and with you to reminisce about our experiences. Being a governor is certainly a wonderful experience, a rewarding, exciting experience, a great education. I wish everybody in the state could be governor. <laughs> in fact, I wish everyone could run for office at least twice, to win once and lose once. It helps to build character. To, uh, Join the club. <laughs> but I think you all are well aware that no governor uh, can do very much alone. It takes many, many people working together. Uh, certainly, uh, as Cale mentioned, you have to have a good staff, and I too am pleased to see so many of my partners out there, uh, Chris Perry and Jerry Sapienza and Hugh Martin and Dan Enterline, Bill Denny. I maybe shouldn't have started this because I can't see everybody out there. But in any event, for all of you who are here and those who aren't here, as a major help. And certainly the legislature, as you know, is vital. I was fortunate to have a legislature in the same party, which permitted us to get some things done which we would have had difficulty doing otherwise. And being here in uh, this college, I can't help but remember Renda Pond, who was head of the Senate, and he was with me. We were working very, very hard together on all the things we got done during that period. And uh, in the House, we had George Herring and Bill Frederick, the speakers, but many, many of their colleagues were a part of a very important team. On top of that, we had this, our own bureaucracy, that much maligned, dedicated, hardworking, industrious people who really put out, and, uh, and the many, many citizens groups around the state that I leaned on very, very heavily. I want to talk today about four things which happened between 1969 and 1973, and relate them to the terms of my predecessors. <coughs> These things don't get done in one fell swoop. They get done as a result of the cumulative inputs of many people over the years. Uh, Kale has already uh, mentioned the New Day for Delaware. I want to talk about the change in the government from the commission form to the cabinet form. Uh, Bert Carville talked about that too. Uh, I've had the privilege of working, as Governor Boggs mentioned, on the New Day for Delaware. And I learned from that uh, some of the problems we ran into. I learned that we couldn't do this in, by one bill, making the whole change at once. It had to be done piecemeal so we didn't get all the opponents ganged up on you at one time. And we formed a citizens group, and we formed a joint committee of the two houses in order to work together. And we had many, many hearings, many, many discussions before this finally was passed. And then on August uh, 5th, 1970, we had a little ceremony here and the cabinet existed. And Bill Frank had a story the next day in which he said, Kale, new day for Delaware has finally arrived. <laughs> See? And it really was a, a <coughs> result of what you people before had been building on for a long time. But I want you to know that that governor's seat increased in temperature a few hundred degrees overnight. Because when you were working with the commission form of government, you really didn't have uh, much authority after you appointed people to the job. And it took four years before you actually appointed everybody to uh, the cycle. But once the cabinet form was, of government was adopted, only 10 cabinets, 10 secretaries, everybody knew the governor had the authority. Those people served at his pleasure. And boy, the pressure on that job went up many, many times. One of the things very few people have recognized, at least they don't talk about it very much, and you historians uh, probably ought to focus in on it, and that is that this was a major milestone in the state in changing the power from below the canal to more equitably the state as a whole. For example, the Highway Commission, probably the most powerful of the commissions, 
had 12 members. Seven of them came from below the canal. And that was typical. Where 30% of the people lived, they had 70% of the representation <coughs> on the commissions and boards and agencies, 144 of them all told. But overnight, we had one person representing the whole state in a much bigger area. And today, Delaware has the most streamlined state government in the country. 